नमस्कार वेलकम टू द लास्ट डे ऑफ द स्वयं प्रभा लाइव चैनल ऑफ द फोर्थ बैच ऑफ द नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 प्रोफेशनल डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम फॉर यूनिवर्सिटी एंड कॉलेज टीचर्स आई एम डॉक्टर ग्लोरिया खुजूर फैकल्टी ऑफ स्ट्राइड इग्नू एंड वन ऑफ द टीम मेंबर्स ऑफ एन ई पी पी डी पी प्रोग्राम टूडे वी हैव विद अस प्रोफेसर आर भास्कर प्रोफेसर ऑफ जियोलॉजी इन द स्कूल ऑफ साइंसेस इग्नू and also the convener of the working group 2 of the NEP PDP program prior to joining igloo sir was director of the public outreach and chairperson of the department of environmental science and engineering at guru jambeshwar university of science and technology hisar sir has also been academic guest at a number of international universities sir we welcome you to today's session on the topic quality academic research sir may i now request you to kindly deliver your lecture uh, thank you dr gloria for the introduction uh, dear colleagues i am very happy today to be among you to talk about quality academic research i will try to share some of my experiences i am sure all of you would have similar experiences and we will see how nep can help improve the quality academic research uh today is the sixth day and uh, by now these terms you must be familiar just only one slide i am just uh, giving a recapitulation multidisciplinary and holistic you must have heard about this academic bank of credit multiple entry multiple exit i just gave some uh, things which are unique to this policy and this higher education commission of india will have four verticals regulatory function accreditation regulations and grants so uh, uh, as you are seeing ugc is giving the regulatory bodies are giving number of guidelines and when it's a dynamic system when we are implementing a new policy we are obviously going to get guidelines so that it helps us implement these policies even though guidelines may be coming and it is natural for them to issue again because when we work there would be more uh, some course correction taking place but the fundamental things which uh, should be very clear is the principles of nep 2020 are based on access equity quality affordability and accountability these are the basic principles around which the regulations will come now it is very important though this uh, policy is hailed as a game changer visionary and uh, uh, you know it has a long shelf life we should not fall into the mouse trap syndrome you may be wondering what is this mouse trap syndrome some of you may be familiar since 1890s the mouse trap was designed and after that more than 50000 patents are there and in us alone there are around 4000 patents but what has happened is the inventor thought that my product is good so people will come and buy but even today if you go to the market what do you buy the one which was made earliest one it is a simple uh, mouse trap in which you put some uh, food material and you know uh, when it goes inside because of the spring it suddenly closes so that is called the mouse trap syndrome it is very important that as faculty members we are fully aware of the nep 2020 that is why ignu is uh, conducting this program under the uh, uh, support of uh, ministry of education and uh, the reason is the first thing is to be aware discuss debate about it and see how best we can implement and as teachers we know that there are number of limitations and challenges but given the limitations and challenges the issue is how best we can implement it keeping the intent and spirit of the policy now uh, today i would discuss about quality academic research 
Now, if you see the definition of uh, university in this document, university worldwide means a multidisciplinary institution of higher learning that offers undergraduate, graduate and PhD programs and engages in high quality teaching and research. Now, this uh, aspect is very important. If you remove research, then this would not be a university. The university, when you say the word, it is knowledge creation, it is research. And it is very important that it should be of quality, there should be academic integrity and honesty in the work. There are a number of case studies which we will be discussing. Now, research is very important for national economy. Go and see the countries which are rich. They are the ones which have invested heavily in research. Earlier was the time when you know you had a mineral wealth and you were rich. But today, it is knowledge creation and technology that makes a nation great. USA, Germany, South Korea, Japan. So, we have to become knowledge-based societies. And higher education forms the basis for knowledge creation and innovation, thereby contributing to a growing national economy. It is very important to invest in the faculty, in the institutions, in the students, so that the next generation, they can meet their aspirations. It's not only a question of economy, the current problems what we are facing requires creative thinking and out-of-the-box solutions. Now, there are some major challenges. If you see the document, it clearly says that there, are, there is less emphasis on research at most universities and colleges and lack of competitive peer-reviewed research funding across disciplines. Here we have to remember that this is the current state, only the faculty you will see that it is a number of systems uh, which are in operation to get the best output. Now, governments have been improving the uh, faculty conditions by giving uh, incentives, career promotion schemes, giving training programs, HRDCs, giving uh, like programs like LEAP where one can go abroad and several exchange programs. Despite all the things, what has been uh, reported in this document is the faculty motivation in terms of teaching, research and service in higher education institutions remains far lower than the desired level. Now that means we have to find out why such a situation is there and how they can be improved. Now the document basically talks about three types of HEIs, higher education institution. One is research intensive universities. It is equal emphasis on teaching and research. The second one is teaching intensive universities where greater emphasis on teaching but still conduct significant research. Uh, friends, let me tell you, whenever rankings are done, research component is very important. And uh, if you see the international rankings, Times Higher uh, Education rankings, QS rankings, if you see even the NIRF and if you even see the NAC gradings, research is an important component and we should focus on this area to get our ranking and recognition in the society. And there is the third one which is autonomous degree granting colleges. These are large multidisciplinary institution of higher learning that grants undergraduate degree and is primarily focused on undergraduate teaching. But it does not say they cannot do research. They also do research. They also contribute. But the focus is more on teaching than to undergraduate teaching. Recently, UGC has come up with guidelines where uh, these uh, autonomous, uh, all colleges would uh, be uh, degree granting and uh, in due course, they would either become part of the university clusters or become universities. Ultimately, the policy aims that every district or near every district, there would be a university. So this is a great opportunity for the colleges where they can design how they want to 
plan their institution. Institutions can plan the institutional development plan and in that they can focus on research or give some emphasis so that their uh, contribution increases. Now this type of classification is not rigid. It does not mean that uh, a teaching intensive university will not become research. It is a continuum. They can change. They have the autonomy. They have the freedom. Expectations of high quality of education of teaching learning process will be the same. If there are different types of institute, the kind of NAC uh, accreditation which can be done, the parameters can be slightly tweaked so that some uh, institutes which are not able to do research for various reasons beyond their control do not uh, lag behind. So this already is being uh, done by uh, the ranking agencies. Now if you see the role of higher education institution, they say that three functions are there. One is teaching, second is research and third is outreach activities. Now obviously teaching because it is a fundamental one, research is equally important. If it is a higher education institution, then there has to be some kind of knowledge generation which is required. Even guiding a student for PhD, master's dissertation. Now if you see the UG program also, they have research component. So in addition to this, they have social responsibilities like developing community around them. UGC came up with a circular sometime before that you can adopt five villages and you can do some community contribution. Then you can also uh, improve the faculty, give them opportunities and this document talks about supporting the school education. Ultimately, uh, all this, uh, if you see the NEP document, everything is very beautifully interlinked and nothing is separate. They are integrated, school education, uh, higher education, vocational education, uh, higher education, all these are integrated. And this is the beauty of this uh, document that uh, uh, it uh, is seamlessly moves from one to another. Earlier there were rigid uh, silos. For example, vocational was not integrated. They did not have the opportunities to move into higher education. So you can see now there is more uh, scope for us to do many things. The document also talks about how high quality multidisciplinary research and teaching is important. They plan that Meru will be established. This is called Multidisciplinary Education and Research Institute. Recently, the ranking was done and Indian Institute of Science Bangalore came in the top in the country. So you can see that uh, Oxford came number one. So higher education institutions will be ranked and research will be an important parameter. And the document also uh, envisages that all single stream higher education institution will become part or move towards becoming a multidisciplinary higher education institution. Why this is important? Because high quality research is possible only if there is multidisciplinarity, cross disciplinarity and interdisciplinary approach. And this has been proved by many of the uh, universities abroad that the innovation is taking place in those universities. Now, when we talk of research, we should talk about PhD students, faculty, MSc uh, students do research. Now the BSc students fourth year you can have with research. Then you have the PhD students. Now it is very important that PhD students should take courses in teaching, education, pedagogy, in their chosen PhD subject as faculty members to spend our time and share our knowledge with the PhD students so that tomorrow when they become teachers, they will be making very meaningful contribution. In fact, uh, the PhD student learns many things including ethics, values, knowledge because he spends three to five years with the PhD uh, guide and uh, he shapes the whole thinking process. So we have a very big role in addition to the teaching of the masters and UG students. We have a great responsibility 
to make our PhD students perform at the world class level. Uh, the recently UGC uh, came out with an announcement that uh, for a PhD submission of PhD, there is no need of research publication. Earlier, the rule was mandatory publication was uh, required before PhD submission uh, was done. Now, why this was uh, waived? The earlier thinking was that uh, if you put a condition of uh, publication, at least the uh, student will uh, do some work and uh, the number of publications will increase and this will add to the research quality. Now, the problem is it is a chicken or egg casualty dilemma. Whether a good quality PhD will result in good pop, uh, publication or uh, good publications will result in a good PhD. Now, what has happened when the mandatory condition was there, a study was done. I will just uh, tell you that lot of predatory journals came into the picture. They uh, capitalized the situation and uh, fly-by-night journals came and students started getting their publication just to meet the mandatory condition. As a result, the quality suffered. So, uh, the uh, 2016 uh, PhD regulations, they had a COBRA effect. Now, what is this COBRA effect? When the Britishers were there, that time in Delhi, there were large number of venomous cobras. So the British government at that time made an announcement that anybody who catches a cobra and comes to us, we will uh, reward that person. As a result, the people started catching the cobra, giving to the government, got the reward. What happened? Some of the people, they thought, let us uh, breed them and let us go and give the cobra and we will get the award. This came to the notice of uh, the uh, then British government. They immediately stopped that award and what happened? The people who bred these co cobras, they felt that now they are no longer useful and that has to be released. And this resulted in a perverse incentive. So when I talk about chicken or egg casualty dilemma, this is a debate whether chicken came first or egg came first. To have the chicken, you should have the egg and uh, to have the egg, you should have the chicken. So really cause and effect is not clear whether a good quality uh, PhD can result in good quality publication or vice versa, a good quality. So now what has happened? Uh, the study has been done from 2017 to 19 and uh, only 25 percent were in Scopus Index journals, the publications of the research students. 75 percent were in other journals which were not of the uh, standards required. This made the UGC, the regulatory authorities, think that this system has this regulation 2016 has had a cobra effect and the quality is compromised. In my first uh, slide, I showed quality is an important issue. We cannot compromise on quality. There are about 30,000 Scopus Index journals in STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and there are 14,000 in humanities and social sciences. In fact, the publication of a paper should be a byproduct. It should not be the goal. You do a good work, you submit your thesis, and out of that thesis, a good work comes. And sometimes what happens, publishing in good journals takes time. You must have experienced that when you have submitted, it can take six months or a year. And for a student who joins PhD, at the end of two, second or third year, he generates some data. And if he has to wait one or two years to get the paper published, then he gets desperate and he goes and gets it published in some uh, low grade journal just to fulfill the quality. So this current regulation removes the pressure from the student and makes the student 
focus on quality. Now the question is, will the quality come if the mandatory conditions are removed? Now already quality is watched. If we are careful at each step, the first step when the student comes, it is a partnership between the student and supervisor. They both discuss. Sometimes it can take three months, six months to identify a problem. And uh, this partnership, because the supervisor has a great experience, uh, he can guide properly. Then after that, when the topic synopsis is submitted, all universities have the research advisory committees where we have external experts who have made some mark in the field, have a name and authority in that area. They come and in front of them, the synopsis is presented and the student gets the guidance and inputs from the committee. So here again, the course correction is done. And most universities send the thesis to two examiners and some of them uh, send to three. There are some uh, universities which send one abroad, one uh, within India. So the reports come and reports also help the student to make corrections in the thesis if it has been indicated by the examiner or sometimes the examiner informs that during the publication, these things may be taken care of. So again, there is a option for improving the quality. It doesn't end here. Once the report are favorable, the university then has the Viva Voci board. Again, there are external experts coming here. Questions are asked. Normally, it is an open system where anybody can ask any question. It is a public uh, hearing like uh, everybody participates. So you get the comments and feedbacks. And the student, when he makes this uh, publication, he takes into inputs from these four uh, areas between uh, partnership between student and supervisor, research advisory committee, reports of external examiner, viva voci. If the student is not under pressure, he has submitted his thesis, then he can publish his paper uh, in a very good journal. Here, it is not the number of publications which matter. It is the novelty of the work. It is a creativity. It is a knowledge addition, which we have to tell the student that is more important. And that should be imbibed in the uh, student that that quality, that it is the quality that matters, not the number of publications one has. Now, UGC thought quality can be maintained only if academic integrity is maintained. They came up with UGC uh, regulations 2018, promotion of academic integrity and prevention of plagiarism in higher education institution. What happened when a study was done, large number of uh, papers were found uh, to be plagiarized. And there were many famous case studies where uh, uh, it put India in a bad situation and there is retraction watch even today several thousand papers are uh, retracted and it is very humiliating for a researcher to get uh, the papers retracted. Now uh, I am reminded of a story which is uh, of a famous king who never wanted to miss the bullseye. He used to take the arrow and he used to hit and that has to go in the bullseye. And what he did for this, he told his servants, his helpers, that wherever the arrow falls, that is the target. So they used to make circles around that arrow. So it is a kind of fabrication, falsification, plagiarism. These are all academic misconduct. And if there is academic misconduct, we cannot maintain the quality academic uh, research. We cannot maintain the quality. So UGC informed that we should create awareness about responsible conduct for research and promote academic integrity. Many of them may not be aware that we cannot take sentences or uh, paragraphs without giving uh, as such. And even if you take 
the source attribution has to be given the author's credit has to be mentioned otherwise it amounts to stealing their work so ugc wanted the prevention of plagiarism and for this the faculty had to be informed there were there was need for education and training to facilitate this responsible conduct so ugc thought that many teachers may not be aware because uh, still there are many institutions where they may not have the software where they can check uh, they don't have the technology tools and training for example uh, there is urkund there is turnitin there are other softwares which one can use then university grants commission directed hei's that they should detect plagiarism uh, uh, by during submission of thesis or during submission of papers and uh, the they should set a prevention mechanism so that when the paper is submitted thesis is submitted it is free of plagiarism at least it is not lifted from elsewhere and they also gave very stringent punishment code for those who breach this conduct so there was a very important uh, uh, regulation which made teachers aware that this can even in some cases they can lose their job they can be suspended or lose so they gave some categories and uh, what were the uh, responsibilities for the institution that these cardinal principles of academic in integrity should be included in the curricula and it was a compulsory course for masters and research scholars just all of them should be aware how to detect plagiarism how to uh, be alert about it what are the rules that 14 consecutive words you cannot pick up so many things then all teachers who undergo the orientation and refresher course in the hrdcs should be made aware because a teacher is the one who sets the values of his students it is very important they should know and the academicians the faculty should be trained on plagiarism detection tools they should be given the software access to the software and how to use the software and then there should be a facility for uh, plagiarism detection for example in many universities the library uh, normally when you submit the thesis there is a certificate required from the supervisor from the student from the librarian that this is uh, free of plagiarism also there is a requirement to upload uh, these thesis in the shodh ganga uh, platform so any uh, kind of uh, academic misconduct can be caught by anyone once it is in public domain and they would be alert so ugc made these regulations now they gave uh, the levels of regulations the level of plagiarism if it is up to 10% no penalty and if it is from 10 to 40% if it is a student for 6 months he had to defer his thesis and if it is a faculty for around 1 year uh, he had to defer if it is a student 40 to 60% he was uh, barred for 1 year if it is a faculty up to two consecutive increments and for two years he cannot supervise the students and level 3 was very serious if it is 60% or more you can cancel the students admission and if it's a faculty you can maintain the same highest level punishment and for three years he or she will not be able to guide student for a teacher nothing can be more humiliating that he is not able to guide students because he is involved in some kind of academic misconduct and it is very humiliating so we have to be extremely careful and if a faculty member repeats again then the university can decide to uh, suspend him terminate him because this brings very bad name in the academic world so plagiarism is a very serious issue quality academic uh, research can be maintained only when academic conduct is in order so to do this the ugc suggested two kind of uh, uh, authorities one is departmental academic integrity panel and another one is the institutional academic integrity panel and uh, the department uh, one deals with the departmental issues 
chairperson is normally of the department is the chair of this and institution the head of the institution is the head of this and there are external experts involved in this and if a head of the department is involved in plagiarism then the institutional academic integrity panel uh, investigates and if any member of these uh, panels are involved then uh, they will excuse themselves when there are cases against them and if the institutional head is involved then the regulatory body can deal with it there are many cases when the uh, highest uh, uh, persons in higher education institutions have lost jobs because of plagiarism issues so we have to be extremely careful while dealing with these kind of uh, issues it is a very very uh, sensitive matter and uh, the students right from uh, undergraduate level are now being aware and trained about these uh, plagiarism detection tools and the consequence of this now uh, this nep takes care that we can improve research ecosystem by catching them young now what they have done in this ug program which is of four years it can be uh, three years they can also do a four year in which they may lead to degree with research and if a student completes a rigorous research project in their major area of study as specified by hei now this is the beauty of this regulation that right at the ug level the importance of research is said only those who secure 7.5 cgpa out of 10 in the four year ug program would be eligible for direct admission in phd without having to complete masters degree course here it is very important if the student has joined this fourth year research he did not get cgpa of 7.5 then he has to follow the normal route or he has to improve his score and uh, then go to the direct admission so you can see how the research uh, innovation creative thinking right in the beginning this policy focuses it is not that this policy doesn't focus in uh, pg programs now they can have two year program masters program and second year is entirely devoted to research those who are completed three year bsc program if you have completed four year uh, program with research there could be one year masters program so you are seeing a student who completes uh, bachelors and masters he would have done compulsorily one year of research that is the basis so that if he takes up any career in academics he is aware of the basic uh, aspects of conducting research so there are also universities where they offer five year integrated bsc msc programs for example icer and other things are there and uh, undertaking a phd again would require either a masters degree or a four year degree with research so ultimately we are seeing this whole policy is focusing on research in ug and pg and that to quality academic research by taking the academic conduct of the student the researcher and the teacher involved in the program now even research internship uh, is uh, very much supported by this policy and what is this experience the job real responsibilities and as a part of this holistic education higher education institutions provide students with opportunities for industry with local industry business craft person as well as research internship with faculty and researchers at their own or other higher education institution research institution this is very important they want that internship should be done with faculty and researcher either at their own institute or with other institutes so what is this this is experiencing the job the real uh, responsibilities students will engage in the research practical side of their learning and as a by product not only their creative skills will improve they will also improve their chances of getting employment one of the important issues to be addressed is also the employment either they should be uh, having the skills to get employed or they should have the skills to create employment opportunities 
तो एन ई पी प्रोवाइड ए नंबर ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स टू डेवलप एज पर देयर ओन कैपेसिटीज एज पर देयर ओन स्पेस एंड अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू डू ऑल दिस नाउ इवन इफ यू सी इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन दिस एन ई पी डॉक्यूमेंट प्रमोट्स रिसर्च थ्रू इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन नाउ वी वॉन्ट इंडिया टू बी ए ग्लोबल डेस्टिनेशन एंड वी वॉन्ट इंडिया टू बी विश्व गुरु नाउ यू सी वाई द इंडियन स्टूडेंट्स गो अब्रॉड दे गो अब्रॉड टू द नॉलेज सोसाइटीज दे गो अब्रॉड बिकॉज द डिग्री देयर इज वैल्यूएबल द ट्रेनिंग इज वैल्यूएबल दे आर गिवन मोर वैल्यू वंस दे हैव इट सो अनलेस रिसर्च इज प्रमोटेड इंडिया के नॉट बी ए विश्व गुरु वाइल टीचिंग एंड लर्निंग प्रैक्टिस आर इंपॉर्टेंट बट इफ वी वॉन्ट टू अट्रैक्ट द स्टूडेंट्स वी शुड परमिएट ए कल्चर ऑफ रिसर्च रिसर्च टीचिंग कोलेब्रेशन विद फैकल्टी एक्सचेंजेस स्टूडेंट एक्सचेंजेस विद हाई क्वालिटी फॉरिन इंस्टीट्यूशन नवडेज वी आर सींग लार्ज नंबर ऑफ एक्सचेंज प्रोग्राम्स बींग कंडक्टेड बाय द मिनिस्ट्री एंड दिस आर फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स मास्टर्स एंड ऑल्सो फॉर रिसर्च स्टूडेंट्स ऑल्सो फॉर यंग फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड हियर द फोकस इज ऑन रिसर्च सो इफ वी वॉन्ट टू इंटरनेशनलाइज आइदर वी वॉन्ट दैम टू कम टू इंडिया और वी वॉन्ट टू गो अब्रॉड we should strengthen the research uh, capacity both infrastructure as well as human capacities now ugc has given incentive also if some university is high performing uh, indian universities can set up campus in other countries now for example iits now they are setting up campus in other countries you can imagine the prestige which is associated with having a campus abroad having the faculty both indian as well as local people there and training the indian diaspora and also the local people there so you can see how this will change the image of the country many other institutions also have joined for this opening campuses abroad and the ministry is actively facilitating this kind of activity similarly those 100 universities from the world will be welcomed the top 100 and rules have been made for example in gift city in gujarat uh, they are free from the normal regulations and uh, they can come and set up and this kind of facility is given so that uh, they can uh, set uh, set up their campuses here and the condition is the degree will be the same the content curricula will be the same the value will be the same so that you will have the indian students getting the same training if they set up here instead of losing so much money in foreign exchange and going to other uh, areas similarly india can also gain foreign uh, exchange or revenue by setting up campus abroad here again if you want to promote internationalization research is very much essential component now research is again taken care in the policy because it takes care that student uh, teacher ratio should be reasonable it should not be high suppose the student teacher ratio is not favorable in most uh, colleges and universities which is the case there are teachers with uh, departments with single teachers or two teachers they do not meet the even ugc minimum requirement of uh, lecturer associate and professor so what happens that teacher is uh, engaged in teaching so many classes over and above the prescribed norms and time for conducting research is not there so the research su uh, uh, suffers so it is very important uh, if as i said it is not a single factor which determines why a faculty is not contributing to research the local conditions may not be favorable though the teacher may want but if you are occupied with students i uh, i am aware of many departments where there are single faculty uh, in many universities or two faculties and morning to evening they engage the student and uh, there is uh, no time to conduct research or guide and normally the guidelines also say that faculty normally should not be transferred because uh, they should develop an attachment and develop labs and infrastructure so that they uh, feel a sense of belonging the policy also talks about competent capable committed and creative faculty it says energetic faculty now if you want the faculty to conduct innovative teaching and research you have to empower them you have to see that they are given the best opportunities they have to be trained so that they will be the motivator 
and enabler to do the outstanding creative work. Faculty is the linchpin of any academic institution. The right recruitment of faculty, the right promotion strategies are very important and that will encourage the committed teachers to do the research. If and uh, just like we have ease of doing research, ease of living, for example, recently government has given for pensioners, there should be ease of doing research. We are all teachers and we know when we take a project, how much hassles are there, administrative hassles, because of the inherent limitations in the system. These things should be made easy so that the teacher is enthusiastic to take up projects and contribute to research and thereby to the national economy. Then this program, uh, NEP, also takes care. If you are a good researcher, this document says there is fast track promotion. This is a VIP route. That means you will have less of red lights in your area. HEIs clearly say that independent, transparent process and criteria for faculty recruitment. They also say that there will be a fast track promotion system for recognizing high impact research and contribution. This is a welcome step for encouraging those teachers to, you know, contribute so that they are recognized. Then UGC recently came up with a guideline which is called the professor of practice or a teacher practitioner. What they wanted is that somebody who has 15 years of experience in the field comes to the institution and engages with the faculty to have joint research projects. When you do, you will have research projects which deal with industry problems or real life problems. And this will facilitate innovation and entrepreneurship projects. They also are to conduct joint workshops, seminars, special lectures, uh, designing curricula, and all this will improve the relevance of the research. Sometimes we do research and we answer questions which uh, none of them are asking. While basic research is very important, it is very important to plan research which are of relevance. Now research and its relationship to teaching. Throughout the world, the best universities, if you take up, you see the ranking, the best uni universities are where teaching and learning process are at a occurring along with a culture of research and knowledge creation. Why IISE is the best? Because they are having the knowledge of culture and research. IITs they are having because this culture of research and knowledge now recently in the ranking which has come some of the new universities including private universities have come and it is a very good sign that given the right atmosphere any university can achieve the higher uh, levels uh, in the research. Now much of the very best research in the world has occurred in multidisciplinary setting that is why this policy talks about multidisciplinary approach. Now the whole policy talks about setting up national research foundation. Why? This body will set up a culture of research to permeate uh, through our universities and this NRF will fund all disciplines and it is not uh, going to bar any discipline from getting the funds. And the, what is the current status? In India we are only spending 0.69% of GDP. Whereas in US, we are spending 2.8% of GDP, 4.3% in Israel and 4.2% in South Korea. It, the policy says up to 6% of GDP and the government and the uh, authorities hopefully would increase this so that the research infrastructure and facilities can be created. Now boosting is very important and NIRF will set up incubation centers, technology development centers, centers in frontier areas of research, cross-disciplinary, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary research, including humanities and social sciences. Now activities, obviously it will fund competitive peer research grant proposals. It will support state universities and uh, colleges and universities which are in nascent stage and they will mentor them. They will license between researchers and the other branches of the government. They will recognize outstanding research and progress. Now, how can you recognize outstanding research? By awards, prizes, seminars on award winning, award doctoral and postdoctoral fellowship, award early career researchers in all thrust areas, awards in name of eminent scientists and breakthrough awards in all areas. 
then also institution of nrf industry award book publication award best knowledge to acknowledge the government department etc innovative competition awards prize efforts etc there are several strategies they will fund all the disciplines some of the action areas are done and these have been fundamental research applied research innovation etc capacity building and all these things are done now they will encourage the state universities they will uh, support uh, up to 2040 so that the state universities can reach up to type 1 or 2 they will establish nrf chairs in cross cutting areas so these are some of the proper uh, they will liaison with other researchers branches etc so these are all the strategies which nipa has identified they will develop culture they will develop videos of eminent scientists series of lectures and international scholars will be encouraged to come organize all these seminars so many things which are being done or planned to be done by giving these kind of things creating clusters of excellence in various uh, institutions so the uh, intellectual property will lie with the author in accordance with the best international practice and government can use this without payment of royalty now implementation will require uh a very big challenge because it is interconnected interrelated and interdependent it is we have to see the spirit and intent we have to implement in phased manner we have to see the comprehensiveness in implementing education is a concurrent subject state and government should be uh doing together Re uh, resources are important all these things are there rankings research is important nirf nac etc if we want to be a vishwaguru we have to have a valuable varied and vigorous research ecosystem and talent and technology will be the deciding factor thank you very much uh, learners